unfortunately it didn't go your way last night at the tribunal. Um, are you obviously disappointed with the result? Yeah, really disappointed, but um, respect the umpire's decision. We went through a process where we always do. We have a QC, John Pryor, who liaises with Chris Bond. They discussed the merits and, and possibilities, and um, that they saw, obviously, and Nathan wasn't thrilled with the intentional grading um, and thought there was an opportunity and felt in his own mind that it wasn't intentional. So we backed the player in and the judgment of the QC, but unfortunately, the outcome wasn't the desired one, and, and um, you know, Maybe we should have priced the risk, you know, greater now because it really hurts now. So, but we live and we learn, and um, it's a disappointing outcome. But um, at the end of the day, we respect the umpire's decision, and there's no appeal grounds. You need new evidence and something substantial. So there's none of that. So we all move on. So that was the main reason um, Nathan wanted to sort of clear his name in a way, I suppose, and not be labelled as kicking someone. Well, I feel like I've answered it. We under advice, and, and you know, it's all. It becomes a matter of the dictionary, doesn't it? Deliberate, intentional, reckless. So, um, but it wasn't to be, so I think it is what it is, you know. Ross, was as a, uh, in relation to the development of the group, uh, a finish like last week do for the, for the fabric of this football club? That's a really good question. It's, um, you need really strong leadership from all your players, and at, at that moment, with two minutes to go, it, and we spoke about it in the box, look, there's not much we can do. We've trained for these scenarios. And uh, I thought they did it exceptionally well. Um, you know, the midfield group and, and the rucks and the forwards all stood up in those stoppages. Um, you know, they got the ball forward. We, we probably should have kicked the, the one before. We just got it out of our grasp, but they delivered it again. So um, they, they believe in the method. They believe they're capable. Uh, and after the loss against Essendon, but even there we created an opportunity we, we probably should have taken where we had the last kick at goal. So um, you're going to be in tight games, that they make and break seasons, we all know that. So we're one and one, we don't want to be in too many of them, but history tells us we're probably going to be in another couple for the year. So they get reward for their um, scenario training and, and, and development of leadership at the right time. So you're right, it's critical and we may need to draw on that again this weekend. In terms of the forward setup, can you give fans an insight as to what they might see this week? Yeah, well, nothing radical. Uh, you know, we, we'll look at the tall options we got on our list, and you know, the smalls are playing quite well. Uh, Josh Simpson, um, Josh Mallington, you know, um, Tom Sher uh, Crozier was really good. So we can look at that, and then you got the talls, Zach Clark, who will be cleared to play this week. We're hopeful. Um, Alex Silvani and, and Tanner Smith. So we'll, we'll just bang our way through that. But we know it's a greasy ground, you know, the humidity. So it lives on the ground a bit. So I don't think a lack of height will worry us too much up there. You mentioned Josh Simpson there. What does he bring to the side? He's obviously got that electric pace. Yeah, he's um, played quite well in the East Fremantle, South Fremantle clash. Um, look, he's still got a bit to prove yet, but he's, he's electric speed and skill. But Look, we're probably, it's unlikely with Josh because we're looking for consistency of training effort. Um, at the moment, he's just been a bit inconsistent on the track. But if he was to get that right, if he was to start the training properly, more regularly, we could probably pick him. No. But at, at this stage, he's probably not. You mentioned uh, Alex Silvani. Is he a genuine tall forward option? I think you weren't as convinced in that one. You said it was just plugging hole for a short period of time, but he's a genuine option? Well, we've probably got a hole to plug, haven't we? So, if you think you can plug it, we'd plug him in there. So, <laughs> he, he's a powerful man, great competitor, and he's played those roles before, so, um, you know, we'll weigh up where he's at, he'll have a good week on the track, and we'll never doubt his commitment to the team and the effort and his hardness, and he's such a powerful man, he'll be a handful, so, he's certainly in calculations. How important is Zach Clark now, especially having lost Kepler, and does that play a role in wanting to bring him in now? Yeah, you're right. He's a really important player on our list. He's 202, really athletic. We've missed the opportunity to play and pick him. But, um, you know, he, he's probably... Well, we could pick him, but we'll probably need a game or two. So, But he's a really critical person on our list because we're not the tallest list in the world. You know, We're not the perfect list, so we're still trying to you know, develop you know, a balance of tools on our list, and, and he's a big part of that. How's Kepler Bradley been? Um, yeah, really good. Look, you know, really feel for him, obviously, and 
he was in pretty good form playing good football so he was uh, operated on yesterday uh, really Julian Feller operated you know great big strong graft through no collateral damage to the meniscus and surfaces which is really critical when you rehab so as bad as it is there's been some positive news for him and you know he, he needs to get to work once he gets back to Perth and he'll start that process. Will your preparation for this game be any different Rod? It's uh, the longest road trip in the AFL um, and Gold Coast have always seemed to be a bit trickier up there. Are you, are you doing anything different this week in preparation for this game? Well I think the first point um, we acknowledge Gold Coast have really developed and improved. They're on two wins. They're looking to go, um, you know, to three wins. So, you know, third year development. They, they've got a lot of their senior players back. Um, last year we went up there with, without a deep understanding of them and really almost got beaten. So they'll have real belief they can beat us. It's their home turf. They've really grown by their own acknowledgement. You know, they're, they're a much improved team. So. For, for us, it's a red alert, and you know we've got to handle the travel well, which which we feel we do. But we've got plenty of improvement in us, as we've said. You know, a bad first quarter on the weekend. Other than that, I thought the ability to take some options were pretty good for three quarters. So, with Nathan Fife out, we need to step up. They'll see us as an opportunity, and we see it as an opportunity as well. So it's going to be us be them obviously and who can get it done on the day so we'll, we'll attention to detail all the little things recovery travel hydration sleep um, mental preparation planning and preparation and you know we want to be un uncompromising with every action this week to, to give us our best chance so just back to the forward structure quickly again you mentioned that you would look at a lot of the smalls who are playing well in the waffle but is it your uh, the preference to keep your favourite structure with the other tool? Well, we've got to work through that at match committee. So, you know, there's a panel of coaches, there's about 30 of us, and um, everyone has a view. So we're working through it. There's some, and we've got some strong personalities on our coaching panel. They've got strong views and plenty of experience. So um, I'll take their counsel uh, and we'll come to a collective view, but we're not there at the moment. We just finished reviewing the game from last Friday in its entirety today. So we always split it up and drip feed it in and now we'll move on to the Gold Coast. So it will depend on what they have uh, in defensive options as well, is that right? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. We always pick a team to the opposition a little bit as well. Gary Ablett, who's likely to get the job on him this week? Yeah, well, I think a lot of teams don't tag him anymore, so he's almost untaggable. So um, do, do we look to maybe give him some offensive headaches? Um, you know, is he the one we go to? But you know, does Benal come back for them? And they got Swallow, so um, we, we've got to work through that a little bit. Is Ryan Crowley put his hand up? Gary Ablett tweeted last year that uh, Crowley plays the man and not the ball. Um, yeah. What did you make of those comments? Well, wrong, look, right? I've been in the business a little while, and everyone has an opinion, and Gary's entitled to his, and um, we really value Ryan. So oh, I think he strikes a good balance, kicking goals. I think he kicked 18 goals last year, Ryan Crowley. So. He's a really dangerous goal kicker, so he can get forward. He's quite tall, so whoever he goes to, we see Ryan has been an offensive threat. So, uh, how's Paul Duffy? You said he's expected to come back in. Well, we're, we're going to put him through a fitness test. There's some doubt on him until he gets cleared. So, yeah, we missed him though. And was that Anthony Morbido's first sort of full training session yesterday? Um, yeah, it was his first reintroduction. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of footy one to one, and look, we're keen at the right time. Anthony will update you because it's it's progressing really well. But um, yeah, that was his first one, so he's got plenty of work in front of him. But um, he, he, as he always does, his his diet's immaculate. He, he looks at me and barks, and he's got all his strength and power back. And now he's just graduating his footy. But it's important that Anthony talks to where he's at. I, I really don't feel comfortable. And last time I did it, it sort of, I flagged it out of breakfast that, you know, I thought it put undue pressure on him. So we're really keen to expose Anthony to you guys and inform our fans and members himself because I can get it wrong a little bit, you know, so. Uh, and he's coaching a bit with the state under 16. Is that a mark of the character of the man that he's going through a lot himself but he's still giving back? Yeah, well, with all our players, we want them to be more than footballers. So for all those footballers, no matter how good they are, we're probably a bit disappointed. So 
we encourage all off field study and activity and growth and, and that's something he, he studies as well as that so yeah he's a really good person to have in the community and we want more of him.